Hey guys, my name is Frank and this is my workshop. All right, we're back the next day and the um, mounting adhesive has set up. So the shaft is bearing is solid in the housing again. So we're going to put it back together. All right. So All right, we're back. The adhesive is set up on the bearing, so we're ready to assemble. All right, we're back. The adhesive has had time to set up on the, the bearing here, so we're ready to reassemble. All right, process is pretty simple. Uh, the movable swash plate, as I mentioned yesterday, has two bosses, a thin boss and a thick boss. The thin boss goes toward the top. So we'll put this in. Okay, we're back. The adhesive has had time to set up uh, on the bearing and the housing. First of disassembly, first thing to go in is the uh, movable swash plate. You see it has a thick boss and a thin boss. The thin boss goes toward the top of the housing. So we'll drop that in there like that. We have the two uh, shafts, the support, the swash plate, this one goes in this side, this one goes in the other side. Let's put the washers on first. We'll just sit in there initially. Put the other one. I've knocked the spring pins out of these two shafts, which is where they ended up when we removed this wash plate. So these are the two spring pins that we're dealing with. All right, so let's get the shafts inside the squash plate. Okay, slide right in. You want to make sure that the trunnion is uh, toward the top of the of the housing. And we put the push the shaft in until we can see the pin hole, the hole for the pin. And let's go ahead and align those with the punch. Okay, so the punch went in, so those holes are aligned. Let's go over on this side, and those are aligned as well. Okay, so now we can drive the, the pins in. The easiest way I've seen, found to do this, since these pins are down inside and they're small, is to use a, a drill driver. It's magnetic. It holds the pin in there just like that. So that'll help us get the get the pin started. And we can just tap on the back of that. All right, so we'll start with this one. We'll just get it started. Okay. And we'll get the other one started. <clears throat> OK. 
IK. Now the idea is to drive the pins so they are just below flush. All right, that one's done. And that one's done. So now both of the pins are just below flush, which means they're um, far enough in to engage the trunnion shaft. I'm going to give this one just another tap. Just a little bit below flush. Okay. All right. Trunnion shafts are on. Swash plates in. Next step is to install the piston blocks. This is the pump block. Make sure we got, got it clean. pretty oily already. The instruction manual says to um, use plenty of fluid when you assemble it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some fluid in um, after we get it, after we get installed. Kind of have to tip it over in order to do this so that the, the pistons don't fall out of the motor block. All right, so there's one. All right, and then uh, here's the motor block. Just getting any last bits of dirt, making sure everything's clean. Turn a little bit so it engages the splines on the shafts. Okay, and I'm going to reposition it back in the. I've moved it back to the vise. So we can finish assembly. All right, so let's get the gasket on. All right, it has a pin here that indexes the gasket indexes the gasket. It, um, if you uh, need to apply the grease, I just get a little bit out of a, a grease gun cartridge and wipe some on the cover surface and stick the valve plates on and they kind of stay on there that way. All right, so the next step is to invert the cover here and place it on the main housing. And we've got to go straight over the input shaft and straight down. Okay. Now when you do that you'll notice that it doesn't sit flush. It The valve blocks are spring loaded. They have springs inside them. So now that we have the cover on we can start installing the bolts All right, so remember you need um, three different sockets. You need the 9 sixteenths. Of course, that's a half. Just start with the center, center two to compress the springs. And just go around. 
tighten them loose, tighten them a little bit, come back with the, the 3 8 inch that 7 16 Here's my 3 8 All right. And then we go back around. So the spec is uh, 30 foot pounds. Which is about what that impact wrench does. Okay. Next step is the charge pump. And there are the three components. Let's get a better view here. Got this small pin which goes through the shaft. The middle gear has um, cutouts in it which interface with that little pin. So it's this inner gear is driven by the input shaft, and then the other gear sits right on top of it. All right, now. Installing the charge pump cover, you need to make sure it goes back on the same way it came off. So, I filed a mark on here, which matches a mark on the other side here, so I know that it goes on like this. Down over the gears, and then the two 5 8 inch bolts you want to make sure that the that o-ring stays in the housing stays in the groove if you pinch the o-ring the charge pump won't work if you get it on backwards it won't work the hydrostat will not work so those are two two key things you want to make sure you do okay last step is to put on the filter and just spin that on. This is a new, relatively new filter, um, so I have no problem putting it back on. If you had damage or something, then you'd probably want to replace the filter. Okay, that's the basic reassembly, and the next step is to put it back in the in the axle. Last step before installing the hydro on the rear axle is to remove the old gat, the old um, cork gasket, and install a new one. Let's make sure the surface is clean, a little bit of solvent so the gasket will stick. The gasket is self-adhesive. Peel the sticky backing off. There's two pins. Actually, there are bolt heads that are there which index index the gasket all right so this is the infamous cork gasket that after 20 or 30 years starts leaking and if you have a puddle underneath your cub cadet hydro tractor um, this is likely why if this this gasket's leaking next step is to install the 
hydro. The pinion it, it interfaces with the gear inside the transmission. Wiggle a little bit to get it to sit down. So we've got the four bolts that go in here. All right, uh, if in most cases you'll have an adjustment bracket which fits right on here, which is used to um, adjust the hydro uh, speed or forward reverse, actually, the neutral position called neutral adjust bracket. I'm not putting it on right now. Uh, my application, I'm not, not going to use that. Um, but you would have it on here and it would go under these, under these two bolts. All right, so let's get the nine sixteenth socket. And the torque specification on those bolts, I think, is also thirty foot pounds. Okay, that's back on. Last thing to do is connect the suction tube. We've got the connection here. So let's get the threads started on both. These are a little fussy. All right, that started. started. Sometimes you'll find that um, the suction tube is, since it hangs down below the tractor, sometimes it's bent and getting it realigned. Okay, so that those threads caught there, the threads are caught here. This is not a high pressure line since it's just suction, but obviously you don't want it to leak, so snug it up pretty good. Okay. I'll get a, a filter wrench and tighten the filter a little bit, and then we'll test it and see how it works. All right, we'll snug up the filter just a little bit. good. All right, now we're going to test and see if the hydro is working. Uh, I'm going to drive it with the drill. I have uh, I'm an, an adapter here, which is a uh, half inch shaft turned down a little bit uh, inside. Actually, it's a 5 eighths inch shaft turned down a little bit to half inch. 
and then um, it has a 5 8 inch hole in the middle which the shaft is and it's got holes drilled through it so I'll just use a couple of um, quarter 20 bolts to fasten it to the input shaft here normally when you of course when this is installed in the tractor there's um, roll pins spiral pins installed in these the drive shaft here and at the hydro okay so we'll hook up to the drill it hasn't been primed so it may take a minute to prime and before it starts working let's see what happens here uh, we want to spin it counterclockwise And of course, my drill battery is going. I had to change my drill out because the battery went dead in that other one. But you see the trunnion is centered. If you push it in the forward direction, which is back, you'll see the rear axle turning. Bring it forward and it goes in reverse. So I've got a relief valve. There's a pair of relief valves on here and this one's leaking. So I have to service that, either replace it, can get it rebuilt. I might have another one that I can I can put in there. But anyway, this one seems to be working fine. This one's leaking. So, the hydro is, is working. Okay, so now the rear axle is ready to be reinstalled in the tractor. If you split your tractor and you're working on it like this, you may have wheels attached to it. Maybe not. It depends on your situation there. Or it's possible to re remove if you have a wide frame or quiet line tractor uh, where you have a tunnel cover between, between um, the seat and the dash that's removable, then you can actually remove the hydro from the rear end without splitting the tractor, which is, makes it a lot simpler. You've got some stuff to disconnect, but you can pull the hydro out through the, through the tunnel cover. Okay guys, that completes the reassembly, reinstallation, and testing of the Cub Cadet hydrostatic transmission. Hope that was interesting and helpful for you. If you have issues with your hydrostat, um, maybe you'll be able to disassemble and diagnose the, the problem yourself. Alright, so that's all for now. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.